Welcome to part three of how to start a dropshipping business. If you missed parts one and two, I'll put the links down below so you can go to them. We have already covered how to find and select the products for your business. We've also covered how to find and select a supplier, the sorts of things you need to be looking for, the sorts of things you need to be avoiding. In, this, in today's video, we're gonna be covering number three, which is the store, which of course we're gonna be hosting on Shopify. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. As I've previously structured the previous videos, I wanna start with a tip. So the tip for this video for your Shopify store is to leave no unanswered questions. As a brand new business, interrupting somebody on a social media platform, trying to get them to buy a product, naturally people's guards are going to be up. Naturally, people are going to be pessimistic. It's just the way things are. It is your job to break down all of those mental barriers in a consumer's mind by answering those hesitations. If you leave any of those hesitations unanswered, or if you don't break down all of those barriers, it only takes one for the customer not to want to buy the products from you, to not trust you and ultimately leave your website without making a purchase. And leaving just one of those barriers will significantly and can make the difference between success and failure. So what I'm gonna to do today in this video is, rather than actually talk you through every single individual point and kind of highlight the areas where most people tend to go wrong, I thought what better than to actually show you a Shopify store that works and does things to the complete or focuses purely on the very basics. You don't need a big flash and expensive website. Often simple is best. So today, I want to show you this website here, the snughugs.com.au. If you follow the channel, you'll be familiar with this brand. This is a brand that's currently for sale on flipper.com for currently the bid is at 30,000 US dollars. So this is a legit brand that is making profit every single month and somebody is currently willing to pay $30,000 for it. This is a brand that has done $2.5 million in sales since its launch. And this is their website. So we'll scan through and just to show you the kind of initial layout, the initial aesthetics of it. So you can see, and not to take anything away from it, but I think we can all agree, like this is a pretty basic looking Shopify store. There's no bells and whistles. There's no custom crazy animations um, or illustrations or nothing that somebody with average experience when it comes to editing photos or nothing that nobody with access to a premium Canva plan couldn't recreate. To create a photo like this on Canva, if you have five minutes of experience will probably take you another five minutes to create. It's a fairly simple store. They are using, if we use our Koala Inspector tool, they're using the debut Shopify theme. This is like the OG free Shopify theme that when you first create a Shopify account, this is the original free theme that they give you. It's now been replaced by Dawn. So it just goes to show you don't need anything crazily fancy. You just need to do those basics Right, and this is often where people go wrong. So I'll take you through the store. I'll point out the sorts of things um, that people tend to forget. So initial impressions at the top here. This is quite an amateurish looking photo. I think we can all agree. And um, there's a bit of mess in the background. It kind of looks like somebody has taken this with an iPhone. The overall kind of look and feel that this brand is going for, I think connects with its audience quite well because instead of being this kind of stock photo that people can tell is fake, this looks like a real photo from a real customer. The logo itself, snug hugs with this like cloud looking thing, super, super basic. So if you're worried about the logo making the difference in your Shopify store, the difference between success and failure, if you think your logo is the reason people are not buying from your Shopify store, I hope that this store can be evidence that that is not the reason. At the top, up to 40% off, plus fast and free delivery, straight to the point. No like fancy sales message there. Um, it is what it is. Shop snug hugs, so instead of shop, takes people to all products or breaking it down by different collections. It's very straightforward to the point. It couldn't be any simpler for the customer. Shop snug hugs, and then they can select the exact products that they're looking for. They have a page called reviews, so people can come onto here. Um, and see the reviews for the products on their site. 
um, reviews being in the head of menu, it's definitely a part of kind of like real estate space on a website that people will be seeing. So for people to see reviews, it'll be really interesting to know what percentage of their um, visitors actually go to this page. The next thing as well that other people forget to do is proofread their reviews, the amount of stores I look at. Um, before I start working with somebody, they have reviews on their store. It's super easy, isn't it, to import reviews using looks or A reviews or judge.me. There's loads and loads of apps out there, but what people tend to forget to do is proofread them. So you'll get a review and it'll be like really cool packaging, sleep, thumbs up. It'll just be broken English, it doesn't make sense. And things like that is gonna do the opposite of helping convince somebody to make a purchase. Reviews are there to knock down that barrier that consumers have of, has anyone actually ordered this before and can it be trusted? That's what your reviews are there, to kind of put all those hesitations to rest. If we read through these, this is the best thing I've ever bought, seriously. There's a picture of a person in a dressing gown in a park by the looks of it. It's great, I love it. Everything works as it should. I bought it for my husband and myself, hubby loves it, thank you. So comfy and the best sleep. These sound like real reviews written by real people and it's image review after image review. It's not broken English. They look and sound like genuine reviews that people can trust. FAQs, an important thing. Any kind of natural questions a consumer might have before they're willing to make a purchase, they can go straight to FAQs and they can find the answer to the questions that they have if it's not already on the product page. I'm a big advocate for having an FAQ. Um, what's the name of the section? It's called a collapsible row in your theme editor where you can have each row has a name, you click on it and it answers it. Having an FAQ on the product page, so it's one less click for a consumer instead of having to go to a completely different page to find an answer to their question, they can find it there and then on the product page. But it works equally well, two and a half million dollars in sales. Um, they're obviously not harming them by having it on a separate page altogether. They have their contact us page, no contact form, but they do have an email address with a custom domain and they do have a physical address too. These are two things actually that I see, again, a lot of Shopify stores missing. Let's check out the product page then for the best selling product. Um, so again, very straightforward and simple. And one thing that you will notice or one thing of worthwhile pointing out are these order prompts, these order bumps in the bottom left-hand corner. These are also present on a mobile device too. Again, it kind of instills social proof. It shows that people are buying it by kind of like pointing it out. Having something moving on the product page is gonna reset somebody's attention span. They're naturally gonna draw their attention to it. And when they see the review, then it makes them consume that review. And every time they see one of these pop-ups, it's gonna keep chipping away at that doubt in their mind. So $50 for what is a $5 product on AliExpress. They go in with a testimonial from Linda. They have Afterpay, which is a common split payment method in Australia. So it helps them kind of piggyback off the reputation of Afterpay. If you go into a website and they have a link or logos or connections to other big name household brand names that you're familiar with, instantly you're gonna kind of feel more comfortable shopping with them because why would Afterpay supply a payment gateway to a business that was a scam. They wouldn't, of course. So again, it helps kind of chip away at that doubt um, and any potential trust issues. No dynamic checkout button, which is interesting. Um, they have the old school kind of, uh, I forgot the name of them, trust badges, and they've put their logo in there. So this is a custom trust badge that they've gone to the extent to make. If we have a look at their product pages, images, we can see, again, there's no broken English here. I think judging by how well or how crisp um, the images are, I will, it would suggest, and the fact that the colors are on brand, it would suggest that they've actually made these images themselves. Um, I've not seen these images before on AliExpress and they have a testimonial too in the product images. If you've never done that before, potentially something to try. Even if you just import your images from AliExpress into Canva, use the background removal tool put a shadow on it, put a background on it, add some icons and some text. Instantly you have some original content that has never been seen anywhere else before. And this is also beneficial for you in terms of your ad performance. Facebook want to be working with original content. They don't just wanna be driving their traffic to websites that look the same as all the other websites that they've been to. Then we have the product description. So this was actually quite a surprise to me, but it goes back to 
that tip that I said, leave no unanswered questions. People wanna know how much the product is, how the product works, what color it is, how to buy it, how they can pay for it, when they're gonna receive it, how much shipping is, all those things, and they answer and address all of those issues on the product page. If you try and hide any of those things, any unanswered questions will be a negative. It will be a red flag in your consumer's mind and it's going to put them off. It only takes one for somebody to say, not worth it. See you later. I'm going back to Facebook where I can mindlessly scroll through watching crazy cat videos or whatever it may be. Back to the product description and we can see, I wouldn't recommend this to be honest, but it just goes to show if it's not broken, then you don't need to fix it. It's very simple text. It's three, four, five, six lines about the actual product, some information about shipping, information about a guarantee and who it's for, what's included, the materials, the sizing, and then reviews. But again, there's absolutely, there's not a single thing or there's not a single piece of extra information you need to know in order to make an educated decision about whether you're going to buy this product or not. You know exactly how it charges, you know exactly how long it lasts for, you know exactly who it's for, you know exactly how much shipping is you know what it's made out of you know what you're going to receive they've just done a really good job of putting themselves in the consumer's mind writing a list down probably on a piece of paper thinking what are all the questions somebody would ask or need to know about this product and then simply just writing it out in text format it's easy to consume and quite clearly works for this company they're also running an outrageous sale 130 dollars down to 50 that seems a bit too good to be true. And I don't, know, I don't think consumers are gonna buy into that. But $50, have a check for yourself, go into AliExpress. You'll find this for less than $5. They're making some serious, serious money um, with a markup of almost 10X on this. To prove it wasn't a fluke either, this is their second best selling product. And the format is exactly the same. This is not a store that got lucky with one product and is now died off. This is a store that has replicated its success with another product by using the same template, the same format. They still have the review prompts on the left-hand side so people can see them. Same trust badges. A review from the same person. $89, or $90, sorry, reduced down from 162. There's actually 879 reviews for this product. Let's see how far back they have gone in terms of editing. So these all still look like they've been edited and make really good sense. I would suggest, actually, I would guess a lot of these are actually legit too, given their two and a half million dollars in sales. A lot of them are gonna be from real customers and not just imported across um, from AliExpress or wherever it may be. They followed the same strategy. So having an image like this for the product that easy to do, you can use the background removal tool on Canva. They've also added a testimonial as well. Definitely something worth testing for yourselves. It's always a really good, idea to track what people are doing on your website and seeing where they're leaving. Are they going to a page and then leaving from that page? What's on that page? What's putting them off? Are they getting to a certain point on your product page and then leaving? Again, why are they leaving at that point? And when you start to spot patterns, you'll start to identify where the potential issues may lie. Then you can address them and fix them and it's going to progress you kind of down the road towards that path of success. Back to the product description though, we can see same format. Um, emoji with some text, very simplistic, very basic, but like I keep going back to, there's no unanswered questions. Everything the consumer needs to know about a product to make an informed and educated decision about buying the product is there on the product page. They've left no unanswered questions. And so with that being said, guys, that brings page step three to an end. Um, in step four, we're going to be covering the all important Facebook ads and advertising and marketing and taking a look at some successful and proven examples there. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for that. If you would like some help going through this entire process from myself on a one-to-one -one basis, a hand-holding experience to make sure you do everything correctly at every single step, then I want to invite you to book a call in my calendar with myself so we can jump on a Google Meet together, have a friendly chat, see where you're at now, see where you want to be with my help. And if I can help you achieve your goals and get you to where you want to be, then we can work something out in which we can work together in achieving that. What you need to do is check out the video description below, click that mentorship link, fill out the questions, book a time and date that suits you, and I will meet you there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.